well, that was part of it. And also, like, speculation isn't about whether the jobs arrive or not. That's, if, that's not speculation, that's investment. And the difference between speculating on the future and investing in the future is that you're gambling, you're trying to con someone into thinking that the future is rosy. If you can tell them that there's billions coming into an area, you can really kind of speculate then on price. And that model that we see in, in the Dublin kind of inner city as well, mm -hmm. where people are like thrown out and office blocks are built, including the one just over here, you know, and you know, where they found Dublin. They found a Viking Dublin and they flattened it to build an office block, you know, in the, yeah. in, in, in the 1970s, you know. Yeah, very, very interesting. Um, uh, and where, where do you think, like, based on history, where do you think that the Irish economy is, is going in, like, the next four or five years? Where are we at? Well, I mean, it's going to be, well, if, like, like the way that it's going is that its role now is to prop up the value of the euro. Yeah. How it does that is, is through a thing called internal devaluation. Um, Ireland, was, Ireland has gone through this in the 1930s and the 1940s. Ireland n never had, didn't have its independent uh, like currency until 1979. So from 1922 until 1979, it was, it was part of the sterling area. It, wasn't, it was linked to it at a one-to-one -one kind of ratio, which meant that if, if sterling had to, had to devalue, which happened about six times during that period. The only way Ireland could devalue or to meet that was to shrink its economy. Mm -hmm. So Ireland, it, it does this in the, 19, in the 1920s, it does it again in the 1930s, in the 1940s, and in the 1960s, and in, in the 1970s. It constantly has to shrink the amount of money that's in an economy to justify being part of this currency. How do they do that? Uh, you basically, you, uh, a government stops spending money. Uh, so you stop investing in building, in housing, you stop hiring people, uh, you don't provide any kind of social services, you, um, you limit uh, the amount of economic activity that's happening in your economy. Mm -hmm. So you go into deflation. And that's what Ireland has been going through for the last three, four years. And, uh, and well, when you explain it like that, it seems that that's an okay thing to do. You know what I mean? That it's not the worst thing in the world to do. Okay, we've been spending too much, we need to just pull back in. Well, it's not spending too much, it's that we're actually spending fine. But because we're linked with sterling, in order to keep that link, we have to then stop, like, stop the economy in its tracks. Yeah. And, that's, and, like, and the Irish experience of that has been massive emigration, um, horrendous social services, um, systematic abuse because um, in, in Ireland, because the state wouldn't step in, the, uh, the social economy was run by the church. So you had the church like more or less in charge of social services. Should we know how that turned out? Yeah. The systematic rape and abuse of, of, of working class children, mm -hmm. you know? So, like, one of the things that I'm constantly thinking about is because I, I live in a, in a working class area and mm. an area of, of very, very low employment. And uh, one of my big fears is if, because it seems like the country has driven into a brick, brick wall. And it, like, I'm just walking around my area and I'm looking at more and more people turning to drink and yeah. drugs, uh, uh, you know, higher cases of depression, suicide, yeah. and that type of stuff. And I just don't see um, any way. Uh, out of that in the next, you know, short term, three or four years or whatever. And it's, it's kind of scary, you yeah. know. Oh, the suicide rate in Ireland, like, it's hard to gauge a suicide rate. There's no kind of way of kind of gauging that. Like even kind of autopsies won't even kind of do that. Mm -hmm. But the World Health Organization who, who you know, who would say, who, you know, who will give stats on, on, on you know, on kind of suicide, in, uh, in countries, um, the suicide rate, according to the World Health Organization in Ireland, has doubled in the last four years. The, the, uh, the suicide rate for women is now the same as men. It's mm. never, that is, this is unprecedented. Women tend not to kill themselves as much as men do, yeah. but that's not the case now in Ireland. You have a country that is drinking, that's using drink as self-medication. I mean, you have what? Two million, uh, two and a half million people uh, waking up on a Sunday morning. They didn't have a good time last night. They were just self-medicating. I mean, this is the darkness that's in uh, your soul that's never really kind of 
That's, that's, that's the thing that we know? celebrate around the world, though. You know what I mean? Obama came here and they handed him a point. Like. It, 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 it makes me shake with anger. I, am, I, it, I, I fume with absolute anger with it. I really, really fucking do. I mean, it, it, just, it, it, it just makes me so angry. Because, I mean, um, there are reasons for that. You know, that, you know, if you internalize, you know, abuse, this is, this is how mm-hmm. it comes out. It, 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 you know, it's like a bubble in the carpet. You can press it down somewhere and it will pop up kind of somewhere else. And how it pops up in Ireland is in um, uh, a domestic violence, suicide, alcoholism, you know, um, and, and depression. Massive emigration. There's mm-hmm. about 900,000 people in Britain who were born in Ireland, who were living now in Britain. Not in, in, the, in these Irish people who are not, well, my dad was Irish, or, you know, I can play for Ireland, yeah, Irish, yeah. wherever. These are people who were born in the 26 counties who are now living in the, in the UK, and it's about 900,000 of them. There's only like four and a half million people. There's six million people on the island. It's mm-hmm. like one, a, a one, in, like one in five of the people born in the Irish Free State, living in the UK alone. So if you, these are the effects mm-hmm. of deflating your economy in, in order to keep a currency happy. Yeah. These are the problems that you face, you know? And the worst thing about Irish history is that it shows that you can't survive it. It's that all of these things, it's not enough to kill the beast. It's not enough to, you know, or to change it. Irish history shows that. It's that all of this abuse, all of, this, all of these problems, these will go on. This will continue until it is challenged. That's the scary thing for me. So what's the, what's, when does the challenge come or when does the rock bottom hit? Like I use the uh, analogy, I'm involved in Occupy Down Street and people mm. are going, sure, why are you here, you know what I mean? Uh, and why aren't people, you know, coming out in droves? Because I personally think we haven't hit that rock bottom, that bottom mm. line. We are surrounded by our comforts and our broadbands and we still have petrol in our car and we can still yeah. put food on the table and it's not until we have a decision, we come to a decision of do I pay rent or, or do I pay food. Now, for some people that's the reality, but I think for the majority of people it's not quite there. So. Well, I mean, but again, even if it is there, there's no kind of guarantee that it will go into protest. Again, there are all the indications of that it will, Irish people will internalise mm-hmm. it. That, it, 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 that if we would take all that state abuse and we'll internalise it. I mean, that's the model. That's how we deal with things in Ireland. I mean, historically, you know? So, I mean, but as far as kind of what you do, there's no way of knowing when the tipping point will happen because we don't have enough kind of information at the, at the moment. So the only thing that you can do is fight, fight, fight. And then that's the only thing you can do. And just wait for the moment. Like, you cannot wait for this moment to happen because that won't happen. Irish history shows that. If you wait, they'll, they'll just keep on kicking you. Mm-hmm. That's what they do, you know? Yes. Now, I mean, in, in, in terms of kind of Irish kind of working class history, which is, it, it, which is my kind of background, this isn't a case of it was 1913 and then it's David Begg. I mean, there's the PAYE marches in, in 1979. There was a seven-year rent strike, nationally organised, a national seven-year rent strike in Ireland from 1969 until 1976, involving hundreds of, kind of communities, tens of thousands of, 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 of people, hundreds of, 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 of thousands of people in Cork, in Galway, in, in Cavan, in Dublin, in Ballymun, in Coolock, in Edenmore, all of these areas. And that's, and that's only, you know, in, in the last kind of 30 years. Mm. So it does show that, like, this is never taught in schools. Yeah, it's not something that I would be, you know, in the front of my mind and going, there's, there's a point where we stood up and we said no and yeah. stuff. And there's so many of them, but these are never taught. I mean, in the 1960s, there was more strikes happening in, in, in Ireland than any other country in the Western world. Ireland was one of the most militant trade union in your countries going. I mean, it's just off the hook, right? Where are the books about this? Where are the TV programs about this? Why doesn't Roy Tur- Ryan Turberty, who brings out a book on J.F. fucking K, where's his book 
on on these struggles. Yeah, because an American kid who you know are, it's are not the romantic, in. and it affects the people, the elites who are in power, and and also it, you know they can't sell that abroad. You know yeah. these these are the great things about. Our and also it shows it tells kind of working class people until you actually start fighting back, they will just keep on kicking you. And saying that, and, and listen, you you can't fight back. Some you win and some you lose. That was one thing that always gets me is that that if you find yourself in a fight, like don't go looking for one, right? But if you're in it, either you win or, or, or you lose. But the one thing or, or you don't do is run away. Mm-hmm. You never do that. If you're in it, then you're in it. So you win, you win, or you lose, you lose, and you get beaten. But you don't run away. And that's the attitude. I think we, a, 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 you know, a, a we need to have now is that we're in a fight. Either we win or we lose. Who cares? But we don't. But we don't run away. Connor, it's been great. I could probably sit uh, and have a <laughs> point with you and do another uh, another hour of talking, uh, and we'd only be scratching the surface. It was great having you oh, in. Oh, it's for thanks you for having me. You opened my in, eyes, and you've really kind of yeah. sparked an interest in in what's going on in this country in the last 40, 50 years, and maybe you know, hopefully we're. we're we're rewriting uh, history as uh, the fight begins in some kind of way in this country. Hopefully, you know, hopefully. Thanks very much. Okay, then. Cheers. all the best. Cheers.